Hello, my name is Kevin Hunter. I'm Kate Courtney. I'm Andrew Burroughs. I'm Dejan Nittles. And we are the Arkansas Razorbots from the University of Arkansas with our faculty advisor, Dr. Virginia. Uh, first of all, we have 2016 members on our team, uh, mostly composed of mechanical engineers, but also a couple uh, computer science in engineers as well as electrical engineers. So, uh, in order to maximize uh, safety and make sure that everybody is where everything goes smoothly, we came up with a list of potential hazards and some mitigations for uh, Uh Some of them included the or a malfunction of the wheel movements, uh, other or issues with excavation, a circuit board failure, and an autonomy malfunction. Uh, we have a chart up here on the right where we analyze the risk uh, for both the likelihood and severity of them. And we implement uh, several different safety features on the robots. First of all, we have the red red emergency side of the to see stop button, where you hit that and everything on the robot loses power and shut down. Uh, we also have teleoperation, where any uh, input from the user on the client side will override uh, the autonomy program and completely shut it down. Third, we also have uh, dust prevention, where we have these electric boxes completely sealed. So kind of to prevent any dust and other debris from getting in and affecting our electronics. For the demonstration of our rover, uh, we have divided the navigation of the autonomous operations into two categories, navigation and exca excavation. For autonomous navigation, our rover will find or be looking for a Aruka marker, which represents either the excavation pit or the dumping bin. Once it finds the Aruka marker, it will either begin the excavation process or the dumping process. For the excavation process, the rover will extend the arm and then the drum will activate, the, uh, the drum will stop, the arm will retract, and then empty into the dumping bin. So, uh, for the performance goals, we had uh, several of them for computer science. We wanted to enable the robot to be uh, teleoperated and have manual control over all of the systems, so for uh, drive training and ex excavation as well. Uh, we also wanted to optimize our the system for autonomy to allow the robot to be able to navigate around the arena uh, on its own. Uh, for the electrical, we also had all of the subsystems uh, connected to each other and we have both boxes uh, on the right and the left uh, wired together all of our sensors are on the For uh, excavation, we have a new design with the excavation arm that can sufficiently collect and dispense of regolith. So it uses this arm to reach down, dig into the material, pick it up, and then it comes back over to dump it into this bin, which will then dump out through the back of that. Uh, for chassis, we have developed a better frame for our robot using T-slotted uh, aluminum, which is better for modularity. Uh, Helps for sturdiness compared to last year's robot. So the quantitative, uh, the goal, quantitative goals for our robot are: we wanted to have the robot be able to navigate across the arena either autonomously or manually in under a minute and a half to allow us to have enough time to make uh, at least two mining runs and be able to deposit it all of the regular back in the dump bin. Uh, we also wanted to have the camera or use the camera to be able to locate the Rico marker and navigate or traverse through space based on that. Uh, with the electrical, the, because the uh, competition does have a 15 minute time spent, we wanted a minimum of 15 minutes of operation, uh, or of continuous operation with this before the batteries are depleted. We should have actually probably more than that. And for excavation, we hope to sit through a layer of regolith and rock in less than two minutes. Uh, which we hope to also collect one kilogram at least, but we have tested uh, and we believe that it will collect at least two kilograms per cycle. So and then in total, it will do two cycles at once, collecting four kilograms in total. Uh, and then hopefully it'll deposit that uh, regolith into the bin in less than 30 seconds. And for chassis, we have wheels that each hold up at least 80 kilograms, which is 
sufficient for this robot because the max weight is 80 kilograms. So four of these wheels will do more than enough to hold up the weight. And they also have motors which carry enough torque to drive the robot. Uh, for the original schedule, we have uh, kind of sorted off into each semester, so fall semester and spring semester. And in the first semester, we were more focused on CAD modeling and getting budget set up, uh, all systems set up, and each sub team set up with what they may need. So we focus mostly on each uh, CAD models, like I said, and then also going to each team, and making sure that they had the materials that they need already. If not, we would get those on the budget order and get those in as soon as possible. And then for the after the spring semester, we focus more on outreach and also building the robot physically. And so we were able to do that sufficiently. Though in the updated schedule, as you can see in this red area over here, that is where we have lacked uh, time, uh, mostly in outreach, which is not a problem. That is just what worked out better in the end. And, but also CAD modeling, which is the biggest problem for us so far. Uh, we've managed to overcome that with the we were able to build a full CAD model in, I think, two weeks. And we were then able to build the robot uh, about two weeks ago. We got the full design completed, and we've been testing ever since. And we've been able to turn in each report to on time and stuff, so we are doing really well. Uh, the original budget, like I said, was dispersed to each team. So we would, uh, we've been lucky enough to have, or not lucky, but we uh, not gone to competition for two years, so we saved the money just from traveling, which is where most of our expenses go to. So, with that, we have a total estimate of 15600 because we've gone to each sub team member, asked them what they estimate they need for money wise for their team. We would allocate them that money, and we came up with a total of those and the travel to $15,600. So, thankfully, we have been fortunate enough to save a lot of money and we are over $2,500 remaining still. Uh, the only one team has gone over their allocated budget, which is estimation. They have gone over about $350 on this, but with other teams still having money left over, they were able to communicate with each other and allocate some of their money over to estimation for them to be able to continue with their uh, system. Uh, so here's our uh, budget management. So we start off with the sub team members who or even the leaders as well uh, They look for their parts that they may need find them on the internet And then they put them into our budget order form, which is a Microsoft Excel form Which tells us uh, the purchase item the cost the quantity of it and product source and the data is received and placed so after that, if it's the sub-team members, it goes to the sub-team leaders, which then goes to the project coordinators, who make sure that with the sub-team leaders that this is exactly what they need. And once that is approved, it is sent to the faculty advisor for approval to send to the mechanical engineering department for order. Now, as you just mentioned, for our team management, we have divided our entire Razorbots team into five sub-teams. Each sub-team is led by a senior uh, engineer or a graduate student. Uh, each of the five sub-team uh, sub leaders will then report to one of the two coordinators we have, project coordinators, and th uh, those two project coordinators uh, talk to the faculty advisor for our team. When it comes to the design and testing of the robot, we broke our design philosophy into two major subcomponents, one of them being the mechanical systems and the next being the electrical systems. When it comes to our mechanical systems, we have then co-divided that down into chassis and excavation. The chassis team was, their major directive was largely in designing the frame, the wheels, and the gearbox. When designing the frame, they wanted to make sure that the design frame was open so that we could not only remain and have a modular setup, but we could also adjust to different moments of torque and inertia as our excavation team changed and updated their design as well. The excavation team not only shifted us from a one-arm to a dual-axis arm 
uh, excavation method, but also a bucket and drum design, which is driven by a literary actuator and a motor. Our second major sub-teams were composed of the electrical and computer science teams, and these teams were mostly made of electrical engineering majors as well as computer science and computational engineering majors. Um, our electrical engineers focus largely on the incorporation and building of the battery system and battery box, making sure not only was it strong and robust enough to withstand any debris that could be kicked up by the excavation team, but also a safe delivery of all the power to all the submotors of the robot so that everything can ensure a safe and reliable delivery of the power flow regardless of the command that was sent to the robot. Um, this was working in conjunction with our computer science team who focused largely on not only user controls, but as we mentioned earlier, a drive towards anatomy. So our user controls, which were brought in from last year and previous designs, were a joystick in which we had team members that were individually trained to drive the robot and send in these operations manually. And now our computer science team has now pivoted to a more autonomous control operation, which is now driven by a camera system, which is used to locate our indicator and give a self-orientation of the robot and then send commands to either excavate or drive to an excavation site based on predetermined programming, as well as a variety of other sensors and encoders so that we can track the angular velocity and momentum of everything on the robot as it's being executed to maintain an orientation in 3D space as well as what operation has to come next. So uh, for design optimization uh, for this year, we greatly improved the uh, mining capabilities. Last year we had an auger system that turned out to be not terribly feasible in practice. Uh, so we have a drum bucket system that is able to simultaneously uh, dig into the ground and excavate the regolith and also filter out the BP-1 because it's uh, undesirable. For the computer science uh, side of things, we wanted to maximize the autonomy and limit the user interaction to be able to have the robot uh, operate better in uncertain environments uh, while minimizing the user interface. Uh, for the alternatives that we considered, so we looked closely into our past robots, which include our 2017 and 2018, 18 and 19, and 20 to 21 which these robots would use an auger, a rotating drum, and a digger bucket. And as you can kind of see here, we kind of decided to, as you said, the auger was not feasible, so we just scrapped that. We took the digger bucket and the rotating drum and tried to combine them as one for a smooth cycle as this would turn and just dig up as much as it can. And it can also rotate to, to the, move away the rig if it needs to. And then once that's done, it'll dump it in the bin and just one smooth process. Then we also have the chassis which has 3D printed wheels that were from 2018 and 19, and metal piping frame in 2020 to 2021. So the wheels have been redesigned to better fit the dimensions that have been required from then to now, which is much smaller, and which is also better because they're much sturdier and much stronger. But uh, also, we have also used a T-slotted aluminum frame as the base of the robot, which is better than metal piping that we had layered over top of each other. And our past robot, which was free of movement almost and could kind of sway, which this metal framing was more sturdy and kind of keeps it together a lot better. So, uh, for the alternatives we considered, uh, before we landed on this bike drum system, we also considered a uh, bucket ladder system, but uh, pulled it out due to some issues with feasibility. Uh, in the implementation of that. Uh, so we landed on this and or on the bucket ladder, bucket drum system, not bucket ladder, excuse me. And we were looking at either using a single bar uh, arm with one in the center and uh, drums on either side, or a double bar, double bar arm, where we have, as you can see, one on each side with a um, with drums in the center. We ended up going with the double bar arm uh, because it was a lot more uh, durable. Uh, performance and reliability were increased as opposed to the single bar. So for chassis, we have also based off of alternatives. So we looked at closely into having the wheels in line with the platform or having them below the platform as shown. Obviously, we decided to go with the below the platform. This is because it's more modular, more reliable, and we could get to the parts better. So if we needed to a part broke maybe, we could switch it out a lot easier than if it was connected 
side by side with the platform. Uh, Excavation tried to have the concept of just the metal framing made out of this frame, basically, but that was less sturdy than the T-slider frame that we had here. Uh, so we decided to go with the T-slider frame as it was the better option. Uh, here's just some configurations of our cat design. So when it comes to the design and testing, even though we do have a great amount of trust in the engineers here at University of Arkansas, we have designed a test bed setup so that we can basically run the robot at real time speed that would be expected of us in the test bed arena. Uh, we have this test bed that's operated here at the research center at University of Arkansas on site. And we use this setup arena so that we can not only uh, conduct all the operations that would be expected of us during the actual challenge, but we can challenge those uh, those edge cases or those areas that would be buggy in our program and highlight those so we don't have to deal with those during the actual competition. So the innovation from uh, previous years is this year we have the uh, buggy drum system as opposed to the auger system and we have uh, much higher confidence in our ability to excavate a sufficient amount of rainbow with it. Uh, we also used the T-slotted aluminum, as we said, uh, and eliminated the issues of the electric boxes having a tendency to sway with the uh, metal binding frame, and that caused issues with uh, some of our wiring. Additionally, we incorporated a uh, autonomous functionality and made fo uh, focused much more heavily on autonomizing different parts of the aspect or different aspects of the robot instead of uh, focusing on manual control. Uh, additionally, so the computer science team uh, has evolved over the years from originally it was composed almost exclusively of mechanical engineers who had limited programming experience and had a tendency to uh, just write functional code that was not elegant and had a lot of uh, some issues into uh, focusing more heavily on recruiting computer science students to uh, make sure that everything flowed a lot more elegantly as far as the code based. Yep. And for the chassis, we have obviously, as stated before, designed a more robust uh, frame by going from the pipe to the T slot aluminum, just for sturdy, stur uh, stur it's more sturdy, it's more modular, so it's a better option overall. And then also, the excavation system came up with a system that can go swiftly into the BP1 material, pick up the rocks, and put it in the dump bucket clean and easy and fast. Yep, so this concludes our presentation. Thank you for your time.